Hey, Courtney. Anne. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Doing all right. Must change background. This is my work <laughs> background, which <laughs> sadly is not on my work computer. Um, let's see. What shall I have? Come here, Carter. You want to come see? Come here. Come here. Oh, come here. Hello. You say hi? Say hi. Yeah. <laughs> so we're, uh, thank you, first of all, for, for leading tonight. I really appreciate it. Um, but also, um, I, we just got home, like, um, my, you know, my mom has surgery. And so I, uh -huh. I was with her yesterday and today because she had her follow-up appointments. You've been putting a lot of miles on your car. Yes, yes. Lots of driving back and forth. So um, we got home not that long ago. So once we get started, I'm just going to mute and, um, you know, close my video and all so I can get her settled in. That's fine. Oh, you brought I'll, your mom back or you mean? Yeah, I brought her back with me. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. It was, you know, it's, it, I think it's going to be easier than going back and forth, back and, and forth. forth. And, sure, I can understand that. Yeah, but she had a really great two-week appointment. You know, they said everything is looking good, and, um, you know, she gets a little stronger every day. So we're, we're very pleased. Yes, that's such a relief. Yes. You know, the, the goal for surgery is to have it make you better than you were before, but yes. there's often a bit of recovery time in that. Too. Exactly. Yeah, that first week or two, you're like, wait. <laughs> Yeah. Why did was, we do this? I was so lucky when I had my surgery last year. Um, aside from like the three days where I was recovering from having a tube down my throat and things like that, I mean, I was just so much better than I had been. It was great. Yeah. <laughs> yes, definitely. I mean, yeah. I think it's going to be worth it in the end. But yes, yes, I certainly hope so. Yes. So um, she says the pain's already getting better. So we're we're very pleased with that. Yep. But um. You know, she's just not um, at a place where she's like going to be 100% independent yet. Um, sure. Especially because the, the incisions are like, you know, in her back. So it's like, right. you know, you need, <laughs> yeah. All kinds of moving. Right, exactly. And yeah. you know, need someone to like put bandages on those. My dad had hip replacement in September. Hmm. And, um, you know, his, his pain was lessened almost immediately, but I don't know if you've ever been around somebody who had hip replacement, but you're not, supposed to, yes. you're not supposed to um, get a more acute angle than 90 degrees. Right. And he sat down on the edge of the bed and he slid off the bed and he was on the floor and oh. it's coming, how can I get up from the floor without oh, no. doing that angle thing? So, um, Oh, gracious. Yeah. So his, his little tiny girlfriend tried to help him. Um, she couldn't manage it. They ended up calling um, public safety to come and, and oh, thank you know, goodness. a couple of burly guys to pick him oh, up. Oh, my gracious. <laughs> he was all right. Yeah. yeah, it's a thing. Hi, everyone. Hey, guys. There. Hey. <laughs> I see a hand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I was telling Diane, um, I, I just got back home with my mom. So um, 
once we get started, I'm just going to mute and, and turn off my video camera and help her get settled in. But I'll be listening in. I got you. I didn't want y'all to have to watch me like you know go about all the whole routine. <laughs> she's going to be staying with me for a couple of weeks instead of me going back and forth, back and forth. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah. I think it's going to be a lot easier. Is she doing better? Well? She's doing better every day. So um, we just had her two week appointment. Uh, yesterday, well, the one with the surgeon was yesterday, and then we had uh, a follow-up with her medical doctor today, but both gave her very good reports and said they're pleased with her progress. So we're, you know, every day is a little bit better. But I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to just being here for a while and <laughs> going back and forth. But you were lucky that um, all this driving back and forth happened when gas was inexpensive. Yes, yes. And, even four dollars a gallon. Right. Oh. And when I'm living so much closer to her, I mean, when I was in Louisville, I was six hours away. And so now it's only three and not nearly yeah. as bad. Yeah. yeah luckily, it's, it's not a hard drive. Like huh. Louisville, I always had to sort of, you know, gear myself up <laughs> to make that drive. <laughs> yeah. Carter, you want to say hi to everyone? Say hi. Hey Carter, how are you? Can you say hi? Hi. Yeah, she's kind of my buddy right now. She's not letting me get too far away from her. Oh, I bet. Yeah. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and, and just mute, you know, mute myself and everything, and um, I'll be listening in. So, and Diane, thank you so much for leading tonight. I really appreciate my it. My pleasure. Yeah. All right, well, I will see you um, all later on. Okay. See ya. Ah. Uh. Okay. How's everybody doing? Lisa's not yet. Oh, there's a thumb. <laughs> <laughs> Is that you, Steve? That's me. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, sometimes I get very self-conscious in, in front of the camera, and I don't know if any of you have tried any other um, video conferencing software, but Zoom is awesome because um you can ask it to make you look a little bit better oh quick <laughs> i saw that i have no, I, is that helpful i need to try that <laughs> tell me how well let's see um if you go to to that the virtual background do you know where that is no you pick the little <laughs> up arrow next to your your um movie camera you pick that and there's choose virtual background and then after you've choose the, chosen choose the virtual background, up on the left, there's, um, let's see. Oh, now my eye is starting to sing, uh, sting rather. Um, there's a, under general, there's a, one that says video. And then touch up my appearance under my video. So, <laughs> um, my appearance can generally use some touching up, and right now my eye is really stinging, and I don't know quite why. So, if you will talk amongst yourselves for a minute, I'm going to go wipe my eye. <laughs> I'm trying to find these cool. I am too. <laughs> I need the slamming button. Two thousand are recovered from COVID nineteen. Six point seven million people live in Tennessee. <laughs> oh, gosh, that? Oh. Oh. Sorry about that. Oh, look. Hey, everybody. Hello. Awesome. Hello. Okay. So. Hello. Um, Hello. <laughs> All right. So. Um, I don't know how many of you actually read the scripture that um, was in the email, um, but one of them was a typo on my part. It was not Stacy's fault. It was my fault. Um, I texted her the wrong number. So um, would anybody like to read um, Psalm 108? Psalm 104.
All the way through. 104 and 148. 148. Yes, not 108. I apologize for that. That was my mistake. Okay. I'll read 104. Okay, thank you. Praise the Lord, my soul. O Lord, my God, how great you are. You are clothed with majesty and glory. You cover yourself with light. You spread out the heavens like a tent and build your home on the waters above. You use the clouds as your chariot and ride on the wings of the wind. You use the winds as your messengers and flashes of lightning as your servants. You have set the earth firmly on its foundations and it will never be moved. You place the ocean over it like a robe and the water covered the mountains. When you rebuked the waters, they fled. They rushed away when they heard your shout of command. They flowed over the mountains and into the valleys to the place you had made for them. You set a boundary they can never pass to keep them from covering the earth again. You make springs flow in the valleys and rivers run between the hills. They provide water for the wild animals there, the wild donkeys quench their thirst. In the trees nearby, the birds make their nests and sing. From the sky, you send rain on the hills, and the earth is filled with your blessings. You make grass grow for the cattle and plants for the man to use so that he can grow his crops and produce wine to make him happy, olive oil to make him cheerful, and bread to give him strength. The cedars of Lebanon get plenty of rain, the Lord's own trees which he planted. There the birds build their nests, the storks nest in the fir trees, the wild goats live in the high mountains, and the badgers hide in the cliffs. You created the moon to mark the months. The sun knows the time to set. You made the night, and in the darkness, all the wild animals come out. The young lions roar while they hunt, looking for the food that God provides. I'm in their dens. Then people go out to do their work and keep working until evening. Lord, you have made so many things. How wisely you made them all. The earth is filled with your creatures. There's the ocean, large and wide, where countless creatures live, large and small alike. The ships sail on it. And in it plays Leviathan, the sea monster, that sea monster which you made. All of them depend on you to give them food when they need it. You give it to them and they eat it. You provide food and they are satisfied. When you turn away, they are afraid. When you take away their breath, they die and go back to the dust from which they came. But when you give them breath, they are created. You give new life to the earth. May the glory of the Lord last forever. May the Lord be happy with what he has made. He looks at the earth and it trembles. He touches the mountains and they pour out smoke. I will sing to the Lord all my life. As long as I live, I will sing praises to my God. May he be pleased with my song for my gladness comes from him. May sinners be destroyed from the earth. May the wicked be no more. Praise the Lord, my soul. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much, Lisa. That was really long. <laughs> I appreciate it. Really long. Well, it's not the longest one, but, but it is, it is a, not a super short one. Um, would anybody like to read Psalm 148? And you can actually start um, at verse 3. This one is, is shorter. But if you start at verse 3, and you can actually... Uh, Stop at verse 10, if you like. I will. Thank you. 
3 through 10. Okay. Yes. 148. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, shining stars. Praise him, highest heavens and the waters above the sky. Let them all praise the name of the Lord. He commanded and they were created. By his command, they were fixed in their places forever. And they cannot disobey. Praise the Lord from the earth, sea monsters in all ocean depths, lightning and hail, snow and clouds, strong wings, winds, excuse me, that obey his command. Praise him, hills and mountains, fruit trees and forest, all the animals, tame and wild, reptiles and birds. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. So do you see a theme there? between those two psalms. Oh. Creation. Mm -hmm. And how glorious and diverse it is, how much um, God loves all of the organisms and how they all praise God. Yes? Mm -hmm. So um, there are a couple of books I put on um, in the chat, if you want to take a look at the chat. Um, and the first one is called The Story of More, and it's a fairly recent book that I got. And um, the other one is called Tending to Eden. And really the theme of both books is um, environmental stewardship. So what do you think of when you think of environmental issues? Recycling. Protecting God's creation. Okay, yes. So many ways to protect God's creation, yes. Recycling doesn't hurt a bit. <laughs> it's a good start. Um, does the idea of stewardship come to your mind when you think about Protecting the environment, or when you think of stewardship, what what comes to your mind? Well, that we all have a role to play. We all have a part that we need to play to make sure that I mean, it's it's the only Earth we have. <laughs> there is no Planet B. Yes. Right. <laughs> right. We messed this one up, and and we are kind of lost. Um, yeah, it will not do any of us any good. Yeah, so oftentimes, you know, we think smaller when we think stewardship. We think about um, the church's resources and protecting that, but um, sometimes we're making decisions that are a little bit too narrowly focused when we do that. If we choose to save the church money by buying the cheapest thing, um, maybe we're hurting somebody upstream of our purpose, um, somebody who was stripping resources in order to provide that inexpensively instead of um, treating the resources in a sustainable way. So um, it's kind of an interesting um, notion What do you think, okay, we're, we're not a typical church by any means um, in some ways. Um, we are much more fortunate than, than many churches. Um, but do you, what do you think um, environmentalists think of, it, of Christians as being partners? I don't know, really. Um, I don't know either. Um, you know, I, I certainly tend to think of Christians as being partners myself um, as a member of the church. Um, and uh, since we belong to this uh, earth care congregation, um, we're certainly doing some of that stewardship work. Um, but there is a history of um, not necessarily Christians um, acting in that way. Um, 
if we were I to guess talk- it's funny i mean you think they're you know we appreciate the our, our particular grounds i mean they are pretty but mm-hmm. i mean i'll be honest it, it's kind of funny that i would be surprised by the participation when we first became designated as an earth care congregation it shouldn't be a surprise but it, i just never put those two together really in that way mm-hmm. yeah um does anybody has anybody looked into the earth care congregation designation and and what part of the uh, presbyterian church usa it falls under anybody know Mm-mm. no it's under the hunger mm-hmm. ministry hunger hunger yeah because you know what? If you don't protect the planet and treat it sustainably, there's no food for anybody. Um, we need the earth to be functioning as an ecosystem in order to provide food. So that's, that's the, um, the basis for that in PCUSA. Um, the book that I put up there, um, it's called Tending to Eden. And it's in the chat and it's um, by a guy who has worked with a ministry called Plant with Purpose. And they are people who are Christians, evangelical Christians who went to some of the poorest places on earth and said, why are these people so poor? And oftentimes the reason these people are so poor is because um, the earth is no longer providing for them because it is exhausted. It has been used unsustainably. And so in order to save people, you can't just send them your old clothes and some um, boxes full of food. What you really need to do is you need to go back and they are and um, revitalize those ecosystems so that they can serve the people. What do you think of when you think of of, um, desperate poverty? What kind of a place do you think of? Houses without floors. Okay. Outside. Facilities? (laughs) <laughs> lack <laughs> yeah, lack of lack inadequate of, water use lack of clean okay. water that's just what i was going to say i mean that yeah. that is that is such a simple thing that so many people don't have do not have yeah um and that falls very, very heavily on people people get sick because they don't have clean water people spend whole days, you know, walking back and forth, carrying big old jugs on their heads or whatever um, in order to to get water. And clean water is something that ecosystems provide for us. Um, It is naturally filtered when it falls out of the sky and, you know, runs into streams and things like that. But when you start cutting trees down and dumping things into water, then you don't have clean water anymore. And it does not serve either people's health or um, the health of the plants and animals that people depend on for food. So um, keeping forests is a big deal as far as as keeping um, water clean. And so planting trees is not just something that makes you feel all warm and fuzzy because you like a tree. Um, It's something that really can um, serve people both for clean water and for um, the the health of the the food. Um, I'm going to refrain from telling a story. Um, (laughs) It's hard for me, but I'm going to refrain. but you know, when you think of, of places where people live in the, in the deepest poverty, often what you'll think of is you'll think of you know, the people who are living in shanty towns um, on the outskirts of big cities. And then you ask yourself, why did they move there when there was no work for them and there was no place for them to move to, no nice house for them to move to? And that's because that the land that they lived on is so impoverished and divided that it cannot support them anymore and their life is actually 
a tiny bit better in those urban slums than, the, than it is out in the countryside. So um, there's a lot that, that needs to be done and can be done um, with helping to um, restore those kinds of ecosystems. So we were looking um, in those Psalms at the relationship. What, what were the relationships that we saw discussed in, in those Psalms that we read? Well, the, the different um, environments, like land, water, mountain. And all those living all things. Mm -hmm. Not just cows and sheep and people, but all the wild animals. Um, didn't, say anything, <laughs> didn't say anything about the bugs, but mentioned Leviathan. Mm -hmm. um, so it's very important to... to uh, mm -hmm. However those are defined. Um, yeah, there are times when, you know, even those of us who are most committed to the notion of protecting biodiversity go, really? Are mosquitoes absolutely necessary? <laughs> um, <laughs> speaking as someone who is frequently bitten by them. Um, but, you know, they, they do have a role in the ecosystem. They feed all the nice bats, too. I like bats, just so long as they're not in my house. I don't like bats in my house, but, um, but I do like bats. Um, so all of these various relationships between um, God and all of the parts of creation, whether the physical parts of creation or all of the different kinds of, of organisms. Um, so what about Christ? What, is, what does Christ have to do with our commitment to environmental stewardship. Hmm. That's good. <laughs> That's right. Uh -huh. Well, well, where does it so say? I, I see the... Go ahead. Go ahead, Susan. Okay. I see these as a call to praise God. Praise God, the three in one, for the creation. And they're both calls to praise the creator and enumerating all of his creation and our relationship to it and the relationship of nature within the creation. I, uh, I'm not sure I see what you're asking when you say, when you're speaking of Christ, I think of it as the three in one of the creation. Sometimes, in, attempts, there. sometimes in my attempts to uh, lead people rather than telling people. Um, I ask questions that are very obscure um, and hard to figure out. So when we think about God, the creator, that's one aspect of God. Um, but yeah. when you think of, of what relationship Christ has to the natural world, do you have any thoughts on that subject? How is, how is, Well, of course, he was in human form, and so many of his parables use agriculture. Sure do. Uh, because that was that was the known uh, environment there, and it always, you know, John and I have spent over fifty years farming, and I have been involved with a lot of farmers. I've yet to find one that didn't have a deep abiding relationship with God. 
because farming is a partnership with God. And despite the bad rap, farmers are some of the best environmentalists you'll ever find. Our very livelihood depended on preserving that soil. Right, yes. Um, I, I suspect that there's, there's a difference between um, farmers who are long-term family farmers and your basic agribusiness people who are in it for the short term and are stripping um, the land of its soil and things like that. So yeah, um, you know, many, many farmers are where um, environmental ethics have derived from. Um, so one of the major early heresies was Gnosticism. And the Gnostics basically said this whole creation thing was a mistake and, or not a mistake, but it was, it was done by um, a different God from the one that we ought to be worshiping. And so all material things are really less good. And what you should be thinking about is just the spiritual things. Um, but Christ's incarnation shows us that while the created world is fallen, it is blessed by God and God loves it and wants it to thrive. Um, I'm pretty sure God is sad when species go extinct because they're not praising God anymore. Um, and also they are a unique and, and um, very special part of whatever portion of the world they happen to inhabit. Um, so one of the things is if you look at um, Genesis 1, chapter 1, um, verse 38, I'm sorry, I said 1, 28. If I said 38, I was wrong. Genesis 1, 28? Yes. It's, God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and to do it and rule over the fish of the sea and yeah. over the birds of the sky and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So that's the, the ruling that uh, humans are supposed to do. But if you think about ruling, you might want to think about the example of ruling that is set for us by Christ. What kind of a ruler was Christ? Was Christ an exploitative and tyrannical ruler? No. Loving. He was humble. Mm -hmm. What um, is often called a servant king, where God's uh, job <laughs> um, <laughs> is not to um, extract the most possible from the ruled over, but in fact to tend. Like a what? Like a gardener. Like, like a, a gardener farmer. or a shepherd is shepherd. the other major one. Or we could say a farmer like Susan. Um, and so it's, it's a different kind of ruling. We do need to work with the earth in order to um, provide for all of these people. There are so, so very many of us. Um, but um, exploiting the most possible out of it is not necessarily um, going to be a particularly useful way to go. So I'm, I'm telling too much. I'm not extracting all that much from you. Um, <laughs> Um, so let's see. So 
when you think about the relationship between people and their environment, can you think of any biblical ways in which um, God and people and the land had a particularly close relationship? What are some ideas about God and people and the land that you think of? So we can go all the way back to Genesis. Um, initially, humans were given the Garden of Eden. Uh huh. Then what? Then uh, sin occurred. <laughs> and what happened? What was what was the the thing that? Then we had to work for our food. Sure did. Cursed be the land. <laughs> It, it, it was all given to us and provided to us. We would have never had to do anything. <laughs> I don't know about that, but <laughs> maybe, maybe there would not have been so darn many mosquitoes and weeds. <laughs> right. So, but yeah. then the original sin occurred. Yeah. So. And, can and, and didn't God say, and that now you're going to have to work for your food? Didn't he say something like that? He no. did. They do. Yeah. T till the soil and I don't remember, but yeah, it's her it fault. Something about the sweat of your brow. Um, and yes. So in, in a Tennessee July, we all know about the sweat of our brows. Mm -hmm. I can get pretty sweaty just sitting here in my dining room. Um, so what's, what's another major thing that God did to the earth still in Genesis. Oh, the flood. Uh-huh. <laughs> People were so rotten. And God yeah. took out everything. Just flooded it all. Mm -hmm. And then what? Start over. Yes. <laughs> you start. And and said, we'll not do that one again. Um so that's that is one of one of the covenants that God has made with humanity is to, you know, one do over we can work with, but we're not going to be doing this every time you people mess up. Um, you're going to have to live with the consequences of your mistakes. So, um, can you think of another land based covenant that God made with people, or maybe even a particular group of people? Or maybe even one guy. Moses. Moses. We've got um, a promised land. Mm -hmm. How would you describe the promised land? The land is supposed to provide for us. It's supposed to bring us good things. I do not know how this idea of milk and honey works with the lactose intolerant people, but um, you know. <laughs> It's, it's definitely um, symbolic of, of richness and um, abundance. So good things for people. It doesn't say anything about the land flowing with um, hamburgers or anything <laughs> like that. Filet um, <laughs> mignon. Um, but... Uh, there's, there's not necessarily any reason that we cannot have the occasional bit of, of uh, dead animal. Um, God provided some dead animals for the people in, in, in the desert after all, so we know it can't be all wrong. Um, so yeah, that was, that was Moses, dead animal, um, quails and all. So, um, The, the world that we live in now is, is not necessarily how God intended it to be for us. Um, there's a certain amount of, of 
living with the consequences of our sin. What are we supposed to do when we sin? Ask for forgiveness. Repent. And repent. Ask for forgiveness. What, is, what does repent mean? To turn our ways. Turn the other way and maybe stop doing that. Mm -hmm. um, so there, there are definitely some things that um, we need to be a little bit more careful about and not figure, oh, well, this is just the way it is supposed to be. Would anybody care to look for Romans chapter 8, verse 22? Chapter 8. Yep. 22. For we know that the whole creation groans and suffers the pains of childbirth together until now. So it's kind of struggling. Um, the, the whole natural world is, is struggling. But each of us has, has something that we can do to um, help make things better. Um, there's a, an idea that, you know, the problem is too big. I can't fix it. Um, so there's no point in me trying to do anything. But that's pretty much true of almost all human problems, and we don't have to fix it all by ourselves. That's what God is for. Um, that doesn't mean that we're not called to make our little contribution to the extent that we can. Um, so in this book that is describing tending to Eden, um, it has a lot of suggestions as to what congregations can do. And with our earth care ministry, we're actually doing quite a lot of them. Um, there's always more that, that individuals can do, but we as a congregation have taken a lot of the steps um, that can help to make our congregations impact, you know, as a, as a body um, less and make things to be more beneficial. Um, if we wanted to do more, one of the things, um, I don't know how much you have all followed what's gone on with the earth care ministry, but one of the things that um, is a little bit of a struggle is in terms of, of meeting the requirements of being that kind of a congregation is our outreach. Um, we do not do a lot of, of environmental stewardship sort of, of outreach into the community. Um, and that's maybe something that we can be thinking about as to things that we could do. Um, certainly um, the community garden that we were doing, I'm not, I have not been paying all that much attention this summer. Are we community gardening this summer? Not this year. Not this year. <laughs> you know. Gathering in communities is not necessarily um, <laughs> indicated at this particular time, unfortunately. Frowned um, upon right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it definitely has complications. Um, but um, so that, that is one form of, of stewardship outreach that we are doing. Um, but, but there are probably others that we could think of. Um, it might be that, that we should reach a little bit farther than our own backyard, which is, praise God, not nearly as degraded as an awful lot. Is a little bit outside of our neighborhood where we could help out um, with planting trees or whatever form of, of uh, okay. water protection we wanted to do or something like that. So that's a thought. 
So the other um, book that I read, besides um, the Tending to Eden one, is called The Story of More. And it has kind of a lovely bit at the end, an appendix that asks people to think about what they can do as individuals or families. And kind of reassuringly, you know, you don't have to do everything. Mm -hmm. You do not have to, if it is important to you, you don't have to give up red meat. My sister has given up red meat because, well, she doesn't like it very much anyway. So, you know, it's not a huge sack. People who it is, go ahead, enjoy it. Maybe find something else that you can do um, to make a difference and reduce your particular impact on the planet. So, um, kind of the starting question is, do you want to live in a more equitable world with a brighter future? We all do. Yes. Is there That's anybody who thinks things are pretty good just the way are, they are and, and it's all right that there are people suffering in poverty all over the world and no. gonna be flooded out in a few years and all those other things? We would all like things to be better, right? Yeah. Right. So that's, that's the first question. So we, we need to help to make things better. And so um, what kinds of values, what, what hits you the hardest? Um, so let me list about eight different kinds of issues or possible directions and things like that, that you as an individual could maybe go. Is one of the things that you care a lot about hunger in the world? Do you care a lot about the extinction of species? Is that something that you're passionate about? That's one of the things that I care the most about as a person who studies biology and finds the diversity of the natural world so amazing. It just <laughs> breaks my heart when we lose species, which we're doing pretty much every day. Um, so um, do you care a lot about ocean pollution? all of the plastics in the ocean. Um, what about climate change? That's a big one. That's going to affect a lot of things. Um, do you love our national parks and want to protect those? I love our national parks. I haven't been to all that many of them, but my goodness, they're amazing. Um, do you care a lot about beach erosion? Do you care a lot about people yeah. Getting, having access to healthy food, maybe organic farming would be an issue for you. Um, or do you care a lot about women's health and um, the things that, that women do in the world? So there's many, many different things that are, you know, less than perfect going on in the world. You don't have to fix all of them. Chances are you will not have time this evening to fix all of them. Um, but maybe you can think of one where you can make a little bit of a difference. And maybe there's one where, you know, what you are doing as a human being is not exactly lining up with your values. Um, something where, you know, in my case, I drive a car. And I do a lot of things that is dumping carbon dioxide into the atmosphere and I hate it that I do that, but I have not figured out ways to eliminate that from my life. Um, I try to reduce it as much as I can, but you know, Tennessee summer, I kind of went <laughs> out and go ahead and run the air conditioner. <laughs> um, but I do try to go away during the day so that places that are already air conditioned are, are keeping me cool rather than running it in my house. Um, so that's one of my excuses for going into work. Um, not every day. Some days I just sit at home. Um, but some days I do, do go into work where they are air conditioning the building, so I might as well take advantage of it. Um, so, you know, are you perhaps an investor? Do you have um, money that is doing something that maybe doesn't line up with your values. Maybe you have money that is invested in 
I don't necessarily want to um, pick on any one industry, but um, <coughs> you're not paying as much attention to what your mutual fund is doing, um, or no, that's not the word I'm looking for. Your index fund is doing um, with your money. Is it investing in something, you know, that does not promote human health the way it ought to? Tobacco companies, fast food companies, um, things like that. You know, if that's your issue, that's not necessarily everybody's issue because there are some people who think that fast food is one of the best things ever. Um, but, you know, are, are, is your money supporting your values? So, is anybody thinking of anything in particular where their, their own personal actions are not necessarily glorifying God quite as much as they ought to? Have you already fixed that about yourselves and I'm the only one? <laughs> no. Oh, I do love paper and plastic products. Are you a user of disposable items, Ms. McAdams? I try. I do try. <laughs> Probably not as not as hard as I should to avoid those things. <laughs> Yeah, it can be awfully hard. I was I was thinking I had done such a very cool thing. You know, I found at Grubs um, these really nice towels that are made from bamboo and they're they're rain. Tear them off and, and use them, but you can rinse them and reuse them and stuff like that, and that's awesome. But you can't use that for, you know, putting your bacon on. For your bacon, you pretty much something need something that's disposable. Um, you want to put that on a nice paper towel, have it sop up the bacon grease and throw it away. So, you know, you, you have to be as thoughtful as you can, but, you know, you're probably not going to achieve perfection. None of us are Jesus Christ. So, you know, we're, we're unlikely to get there, but seeing what steps we can take um, to try to do a little bit better. I see people often using the reusable shopping bags and I think that would be a step. I just haven't taken the leap. I just feel like I would need so many. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking that, that Lisa is waving her hand that she uses reusable shopping bags. Yeah, I do. And, and on thir last Thursday, cause I shop once a week during this whole pandemic, they've not said one word to me, but I had a Walmart personnel come over to me and told me, Last Thursday, I could no longer bring my bags in for a while. Aww. That's, that's interesting because um, that was something that I heard about in mid-March, that we were not supposed to bring bags. Um, but I actually asked about that. And it turns out it's not you bringing your bag, it's you're handing your bag to the checker or you're putting your bag on the self-check. Because yes. that's transferring your team. If you leave your bags in your cart and load them yourself, you can do that. And I actually did continue to do that. Um, okay. So well, I was using the self-check and put um, them, they were on the self-check. But anyway, so, but I've done that for years and years. I mean, before we ever moved here. In Atlanta, I was doing that. Actually, it was paper bags in Atlanta that I would bring back every Use. week. Yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, so, and when I first moved here and was doing it, Walmart stopped me and told me, absolutely, do not do that, because they thought that I could possibly be shoplifting. This was 17, 18 years ago. I had <laughs> the manager come up to me and told me, no more. So I didn't for a long period of time because of that. And then when they started with the reusable bags, then I was able to start back using my bags. So anyway, so yeah. that's my tiny, tiny, tiny <laughs> gift back. Yeah, well it's, I mean, you know, I, I use reusable bags. So the one that I have um, that I use the most is a small, folds up so that it just 
lives in my purse and I don't need to remember it. It just lives there. Um, I just have to put it back after I take the groceries out and it doesn't take up very much room. But my mother used reusable bags since the 70s. Wow. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so I grew up with this. And um, so it's, it's a, a, a habit that I have had. Um, so I, that's not something I can take a lot of credit for. Um, figuring out that I could still use my bags during the pandemic, I'll take a little bit of credit for that. But um, no, I was, I was raised to use reusable bags and to, um, and to recycle. Used to go to the local community college um, when I was like five, six, seven, and um, they had different colored, um, they had dumpsters for different colors of glass. And so it's a super fun thing when you are five to throw a glass bottle into a <laughs> dumpster full of glass. Um, yeah, wonderful smashing sounds. Um, but recycling is harder here in Jackson. Mm -hmm. Has anybody currently found ways to recycle? Well, we recycle too because that came with us from Atlanta. We had curbside pickup in Atlanta. And, and do so, you have curbside pickup now, Lisa? We don't. I mean, it was free curbside. Or paid sure. for with your city services. Correct. Included. So, included. So, yes, yeah, Steve and I do. We, we still continue to recycle paper, plastic, and aluminum cans. I have currently two enormous bags of aluminum cans in my garage because all fiber. So do we. <laughs> so do we. Because okay. now the church, the church is the only place we know of that will take aluminum cans anymore. Yeah, which is ridiculous because aluminum is one of the easiest things to recycle and it's one of the most horrible things to mine. Um, it's so destructive. But um, yeah, all fiber, I, I called them up and they said, nope, we can't take things from, from the public at this point, but I need to call them up and ask them again if they have made it so that they can take things from, you know, because most restrictions have been listed. We're back to wearing masks, but I think most of the business restrictions on who can do what have been lifted. Um, and if you get um, plastic uh, wrappings or, or plastic bags, you can take those back to, to Kroger. Um, the, the customer service people will take your, you know, all those clear wrappings that come around your, your various stuff, you know, not stuff that's gotten icky and sticky and gross with food stuff on it and things. But um, oftentimes things are covered in clear plastic and you can just collect that and, and take it back to Kroger. And you're out there. Kroger, I think is trying. I didn't know that they would take those things back. Yeah, you know, you can't put that in in the um, no the, the in the plastic recycling at Westwood Gardens, um, but but you can take it back to Kroger because they yeah, and so that's a a nice thing, but yeah, um, the the Westwood Gardens dumpsters are. Um, maybe a 10 minute walk from my house. So that's sometimes what I do for my morning exercise is I'll take a bag of plastic and I'll take a bag of, of paper down there for a walk. I have to walk about a block and a half on, on Lambeth where there are no sidewalks, um, but I have not yet been hit by a car. <laughs> and otherwise it's quite a nice walk and I get to walk on that walk. <laughs> so yeah um anybody have any other things that they are doing anybody gardening i'm enjoying everything my parents garden <laughs> if that helps yeah. any. <laughs> you know Gratitude for the gifts of the earth, if they also come from your parents, is plenty of fine thing. I have, um, I have some tomatoes and I have a big old ton of basil. If anybody needs basil, you just let me know and I will bring you some basil. I think sometimes too, we just get out and try to enjoy 
the nature of things. And we were genuinely upset when they, we couldn't even go to Fence Mounds or we couldn't mm -hmm. go to Cypress Grove because we mm -hmm. really just like going and being there. Yeah. And we were so limited anyway, but we, we already did those things. Even if, you know, like I dragged the 15 year old and he likes it, I know on some level, but um, Darcy and I go to just walk at a different place sometimes just to be somewhere else and see different things. And absolutely. You know, everybody grows something different in different places. It's just neat to see all those things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, appreciating um, the, the wonders of our natural world is a pretty good start to wanting to do a little bit more to protect it. Mm -hmm. So, um, and sometimes it's your, your puppy dog, which I saw one wandering around behind Harbor. <laughs> um, so, yeah, um, I just wanted to encourage everybody to notice the scripture that for the natural world and for not just humans, but all of the living things in it, including even some of the scary ones like Leviathan and the lions. Um, we, we um, have a lot to be grateful for and we need to be maybe a little bit more mindful of the impact that our behavior has on things. Yeah. Would anybody like to ask for any prayers? Do we have anything we need to be in prayer for? Our schools. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything in particular about the school, Stacy? That we have it. <laughs> and I know that I speak for many parents, but that we have it safely, that we are considerate of not only our students and our parents, but our staff. Yes. And we do it in, in smart ways. Yeah. Well, that's but, something that, that we're looking at um, at Lane is that we have a lot of faculty who are really anxious to get back in the classroom, but we've also got some who are in a little bit more fragile health who are quite honestly, seriously worried about it. Right. Um, so we're, we're trying to make a bunch of individual accommodations for that um, so that they can teach online if that's what they need to do. Um, we just need to pray for a lot of, um, I guess, calm and some relief of anxiety because for every parent that is ready to send their kids back to school or college student that wants to be there, they are also nervous. Yep. Yep. I 100 percent ready for them to get out of the house, but, but I spoke to percent not sure it's a good idea. I spoke to a student today who said, I want to come back to school, but I'm going to be taking my classes online this semester because my mom is afraid to send me back. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, not, not that we've had any cases um, at the college, but anytime there's travel and teenagers, um, there are risks. All right. All right. Well, we are just about out of time. So would anybody like to offer a prayer? Or shall I do it? Go for it. Okay. <laughs> Almighty God. We give you thanks for all the wonders of your creation. We give you thanks for both the beauties and for the power of all of the forces of nature and the living things with which we share our earth. We ask that you protect us and help us to be more mindful of the actions that we take that are not helping to protect all of this wonderful natural world of ours. We ask that we in particular be very mindful and considerate of one another as we make our individual choices to cope with this particular creation of yours, the COVID-19 um, causing virus. Um, it is something that has frightened us and 
you don't quite know how to deal with it. Help us to be kind to one another as we make our choices and our decisions. Please give all of our leaders and decision makers um, wisdom and discernment. What to open up and how and help us to continue to gather in the ways that we can while protecting one another until we can come back together in a safe way. We ask all of these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Diane. Thanks, Diane. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Diane. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Have fun. Be safe. See y'all later. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye